Very good. Good morning. Excellent. So last lesson, we learned that the angle at the center of a circle is two times as big as the angle at the circumference. We also reviewed three other, sorry. We also reviewed, I think, two other angle properties that we would have learned prior to. So I'm going to share my screen and we're going to go to our warm-up activity. All right. So the warm-up activity is on the screen. Um, again, you're going to respond to me in the chat and we're going to start with question one. We're going to start with question one. All right. So most persons are saying that angle X is 120 degrees. That is correct. Angle X and 240 degrees are what we call angles at a point. They share a common vertex. And in addition to them sharing a common vertex, they make a complete revolution. Perfect. Angle two now. Angle two. All right, what is angle two? Ashton, you're not quite correct. What's angle two? Miss Newball, you can, um, I think you need to perhaps send a, a message to Mr. Gray to make sure you're a panelist. All right, some persons are giving me different responses. Um, any, wanna, okay, okay, good, perfect, very good. For those of you who said that angle, question two, angle A is, for those of you who said that angle A is 133 degrees, you are correct, okay? Um, angle A and 47 degrees are adjacent angles. In addition to them being adjacent angles, they are angles on a straight line. Now, we're going to need that property for today's lesson. So that's why I reviewed that. So A is therefore going to be, because angles on a straight line add up to 180 degrees. So 180 minus 47 should give me 133 degrees. Perfect. All right, question three. Question three. What is angle X? Angle X is in a triangle. So you need to recall um, angles in a triangle property. And that's a special triangle. It has unique, it has unique properties that are um, special just for that type of triangle. I'm already getting two correct answers. Very good to Ray. Very good, Jason. Very good, Bernika. Olivia, not quite. Very good, Rakai. All right, let's go over the answers. So this type of triangle is what we call an isosceles triangle. Isosceles triangles are triangles that have two equal sides and two equal angles. Now, that means, what does that mean when I say two equal angles? The side opposite this marker, the angle opposite this marker, I'm sorry, is going to be equal to the angle opposite this marker. So essentially, these two angles are equal, okay? They have the same value. Now, we also know that angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees, okay? So it's safe to say that because they add up to 180 degrees and I have three angles, I can identify all three of my angles. And I'm gonna name this next angle X. I'm going to call it X because whatever the whatever measure this angle is, this angle will also be, okay? Both angles are going to be equal. So I can say that I'm going to try to abbreviate it. So I'm going to say that X is equal to one hundred and eighty. minus 30, and I'm doing a lot of steps all in one, divided by two. Why am I going to divide by two? I'm going to divide by two because remember now, the balance or the remainder from the 180 degrees has to be split equally between the two even angles. So my two equal angles, remember, are x. x plus x would give me 2x. But I just want the value of one. When I find the value of one, I find the value of the other. So once you work out 180 minus 30, you're going to get 150. 
at 150 divided by two, that is correct, Dinaj, is 75 degrees, all right? So let's move on. All right, so this question four goes back to our circle theorems. The very first circle theorem that we learned was that the angle at the center of a circle is two times as big as the angle at the circumference. What is angle C? All right, someone is saying 45. 45, interesting. I know this would happen. <laughs> That's why I picked that question. Teray, you are actually correct. Not quite a Leo Akia. Very good, Rakai. All right, so let's review. Angle, this angle here, because that is an oval. It's not O. But I mean, no, it's not O. This angle here, that's 45 degrees. This angle here is 45 degrees. Where is this angle? Everybody answer me. Where is this angle? Where is this angle? What part of the circle is this angle? I'm waiting on you to respond. Let's go quickly. Come on. This angle is at the center. Good. Where is angle C? Where is angle C? Where is angle C? Good. Angle C is at the circumference. So the first theorem that we learned said that the angle at the center is always going to be two times as large as the angle at the circumference, okay? So that means that C would be half of 45, which would give me 22.5. I saw some person telling me that it's 45 because I think they are mixing up the angles in the same segment theorem. That doesn't apply here. Angles in the same segment will both be at the circumference, okay? We're going to get back to that. Let's go to question four. Let's go to question four. Question four. I want you to find angle A. I want you to find angle A. I'm going to give you a little hint. What's, I, what's that angle there? Let's call that B. What's angle B? Very good, Rikia. Very good, Teray. Very good, Ashton. Rest of you, come on. I got, the more you participate, the more you are able to test your understanding. I gave you angle. I gave you a hint for angle B. I gave you a hint. I want you to tell me what is A. Very good, Clinton. Very good, Jason. More responses. <laughs> Excuse me. What's angle A? All right, come on. What happened to the rest of you? Scared? I want that measurement. I want the measurement, Rikisha. Tell me what how many degrees is angle A? Okay, very good, Rikisha. Very good. Excellent. Excellent, Nicholas. All right, so angle B is at the center of my circle. Angle B is at the center of my circle. That angle, we can look at and see what it is. That angle is 180 degrees. That's a straight angle. We know from our previous theorem that angle B is supposed to be or will be two times as big as the angle at the circumference. So if angle B is 180 degrees, then angle A must be half of that. And half of that will be, that is correct, Olivia, that's correct, Brittany. Half of that is going to be 90 degrees. We said that angle B is 180 degrees. Let me draw it in. Angle B is 180 degrees because it's an angle on, it's a straight angle. So therefore, angle A, the angle at the circumference, is half of that. And that angle is 90 degrees. Okay? 
for those of you who got it correct, that is perfect. That theorem, um, that question is an, is going to lead us to our second theorem and the start of today's lesson. So I'm going to guess get into today's lesson. All right, so lesson three. Circle theorems lesson three. At the end of this lesson, students will be able to review how to apply the angle at the center theorem. And then we're going to state and apply the angles in a semicircle theorem as well as angles in the same segment. All right, so angle in a semicircle, same concept. The angle in a semicircle is a right angle. So let's break this down. What is this gray line that passes through the center and touches two opposite ends of the circumference? What's that line? Very good, Rikisha. Very good, Teray. Very good, Aaliyah. Excellent. That line is the diameter, okay? So what does the diameter do? The diameter of that line actually cuts my circle into two, okay? So it's safe to say that my circle now it has two semicircles. We're more concerned about the angle that is formed at the circumference as a result of that, just like our last just like our last um, property, it says the angle at the circumference, and I can, I'm going to draw on this, the angle at the center, sorry, that's this angle here, which as we just said was 180 degrees, is going to be two times as big as the corresponding angle at the circumference, which will be 90, okay? So this angle is 180 this angle will be 90 degrees all the time. And it makes, they call it the angles in a semicircle. Very easy concept, right? Okay, so let's go ahead and let's see how we are going to apply this concept. So we're going to apply our angles in a semicircle concept. Remember, you respond in the chat and you ask questions in the question and answer. So the first one would be, what is angle D? What is angle D? What is angle D? Going back to our Janu theorem, we know that this is the diameter and my circle is split into a semicircle. The angle at the circumference must be what measurement? Very good. So angle D is 90 degrees. That's perfect. Perfect. Very good, guys. Angle D is 90 degrees. Now we need to find angle E. Here's another thing I need to mention to you. In most cases, when you are solving problems that require you to find multiple angles, you always go in alphabetical order because in most cases, the alphabetical order um, is intentional. D will help you to find E. So you couldn't go to E first, okay? So if D is 90 degrees and the opposite and the other angle is 37, what's E? We need to do what? We need to... Um, Add angle D and angle E, which will be 90 plus 37, and we need to subtract from 180. I'm going to do that somewhere in the corner here for you. So D, we already did D. So let's say E is equal to 180, and I'm going to write it vertically, guys, because remember, I don't have much space. Minus 90 plus 37 is 127. So that angle will be... I think I'm correct, 53 degrees. For those of you who did that, excellent job. Let's go straight to four because we got, I just want us to go cross. That's easier. What's angle L? What's angle L? For those of you who got 53 degrees, perfect. What's angle L? 90. Good, good, good. Perfect, perfect. Even though it's turned around, it's the same concept. Can we find M? What's M? All right, very good, Olivia. Waiting on the rest of you. Very good, Rikia. Excellent, Nicholas. 
All right, wait, Shantae, not quite, not quite. Same thing with Rake Rakisha, not quite. All right. All right, so angle M. I'm only going to focus on M because we know what L is. So M will be, M is equal to 180 minus, that's 90 plus 29. I think that's 119. So that's going to be, M is 61 degrees. For those of you who got it correct, perfect. Excellent job. We're going to do two more of them, and then we're going to move to some more challenging questions. At least let's just do question two. Um, again, I'm going to make sure that all of the... Actually, I'm going to copy and paste this link and put this in the chat for you so that you can have extra practice, okay? What's F? I'm going to copy and paste this link. I'm going to do that right now. Put it in the chat for you so that you can practice this. Oh, I don't think you're going to be able to practice this one because this one is a PDF. What's F? What is F? Good. What is F? Good. F is equal to 90 degrees. Same concept. Excellent. What's G now? G is equal to 45 degrees. Excellent. So that's just a basic introduction to it. Now let's do some more challenging questions because it seems to me, it seems to me that you guys really, um, you understand the concept thus far. All right. Let's look at question one. What is X? Now, what I want you to do with this question is I want you to ignore I want you to ignore the double triangles. I want you to focus on one triangle at a time. So I want you to focus on this triangle here only. What's X? X is 90 degrees. Perfect. Perfect. Let's clear all. Let's look now at Y. Let's focus on that triangle at a time. Excellent. Y is also 90 degrees. Perfect. Let's look at question two. What is X for question two? X is also 90 degrees. What about Y? It gave you a double triangle in there. Both are 90. Very good, Olivia. Excellent. All right. Now it's going to get a little bit more challenging. Let's look at question three. Question three. Remember I said that in most cases, you can use the alphabetical order concept. So W comes before X and Y, so we're going to find W first. I want you to put W is equal to what? Very good, Nicholas. Very good, Teray. All right, waiting to have from the rest of you. Very good, Aaliyah. Good, Jason. Very good, Akia. W is 90 degrees. Good. Same concept. Now let's find X. Let's find X. Good. Very good. X is 65. Perfect. Now we're going to get to Y. What's Y? Y is 90. Very good. I'm going to skip four because four requires us to go to some other angle properties that I'm not certain most of you would have done. So I'm going to go to five. I like question five. The question five talks about naming angles that has three letters. And that's an important thing to know how to do. How do you identify when they say they want to talk about three angles? All right. So there's a little typo in there too. Because they say fine angle OAB. That's not correct. Let's read the second part of it. So I'm going to just put a little marker through that because I want us to ignore what that's saying. We're going to start at given. Given that angle OAB is equal to 15 degrees, calculate OAC. What do they mean when they give you three letters? Three letters basically identifies the triangle that you're going to focus on. So I'm just going to take my spotlight and show you. We're going to focus on O. We're going to focus on OAB. So that means you're focusing on this triangle here, okay? 
The letter in the middle speaks about the vertex of the angle too. So OA is in the middle. So that means that my focus will be on vertex A. Let me just write that a little bit better. I'm focused on vertex A, which would be this angle here. Good. Part A says find angle OAC. OAC. Let's break that down. O A O A C O A C Again A is going to be at the vertex but I'm in the diff I'm in the opposite triangle now okay everybody see that I'm going to highlight the angle that they want me to find they want me to find and I just want to trace over so you can see Let me use the highlighter They want me to focus on that angle. I'm finding OAC. All right, what, what am I going to do? What's going to help me? Come on, talk to me. Any suggestions? What should I do? What should I do? Oh, some persons have already answered. Ricky is saying, very good, Ricky, the rest of you. I know that, and I'm going to point something out to you. I know that angle C, A, B must be equal to 90. And they've already given me a portion of that angle. So I'm going to subtract 15 degrees from 90 degrees. All right, Ashante, um, I want you to clearly say in the question and answer section, okay? Go to the question and answer section and explain and, and say, what the issue is, okay? All right, so most of you are getting it, that's 75, very good, because I'm gonna do, this is going to be equal to 90 degrees, sorry. Ninety degrees minus 15 degrees, which will give me, seventy-five degrees, five is 80, good. A, O, B now. They're asking me to find A, O, B. Oh, that's a good question. That's a really good question. So let's erase some of this stuff in the diagram. A, O, B. Good. That's a really good question. This goes back to our isosceles triangle concept. Um, I'm going to identify my two radii. Um, who's that? Rikia, I think you're looking at the wrong angle. That's a, that's a hint. Um, the angle that they want me to find, let me highlight it for you, is right there. Excuse me. Excuse me. The angle that they want me to find is right there. AOB. Before I can find AOB, I must find, well, there's several ways that I can do it, but I think it's easiest to find this little fella here. What's that, little, what's that little fella there? What's that? All right. All right, we found the red angle. Now, we know that, again, this is an isosceles triangle because um, OB is a, ra is a radius and OA is a radius. So that makes an isosceles triangle again. Angles in a triangle add up to 180 degrees. I've already found two of my angles. So what is AOB -O -A -O going to be? AOB is going to be 180 minus 30, which will give me 150 degrees. Very good, Laura. Now, I can send you the link to, well, it seems as if I have another um, question with page with this up. So I'm going to send you the link to another page that you can go to and practice. Now, for those of you who are working on your laptops, you may, oh, that's a PDF. Okay, so that won't work. Um, you, that won't work. Okay, all right, that's fine. Those of you working on your laptops, 
you may be able to click the links easily while others of you may have an issue if you're working on your phone or your tablet. But again, the resources will be loaded to the website and you are able to go back on the website. Just give them until Friday and they're going to have all of the resources available to you. So now that we are good with angles in a semicircle, let's investigate our second, th our third circle theorem. So let's go back to our PowerPoint. So we are very good. We have an understanding of that one. We, we already did the practice. Let's go into this circle theorem now. This circle theorem says that angles, once you have angles in the same segment, they are equal. What does that mean? All right, so let's look at this red line here. That's my spotlight, good. Get my spotlight. This red line here is called a chord. Um, I'm gonna just type that in because I want you to notice that. So this is my chord. That's a chord. As a result, um, if I'm looking at my chord, two angles are formed by other chords. But these two angles here, the two angles that touch the circumference, That's this angle here and this angle here. These two angles, both of them touch the circumference. These two angles are equal, okay? So that means that if this angle was 30 degrees this angle will also be 30 degrees. Now I like to call this theorem the bow tie property because it sort of kind of looks like a bow tie. The only thing you need to be careful or mindful of is you need to ensure that both angles are at the circumference, okay? Why do they use the term angles in the same segment? Let me speak about that. My chord separates my angles into two different segments. One segment is called the minor segment. That's so. Uh, that's this down here. That's a minor segment. And the, up, the one on the other side is called a major segment. So I'm gonna just quickly highlight that. So that's what I mean. That's why they say angles in the same segment. Yes, all right? So let's move on. So I'm gonna move, let me clear my screen. And let's move to our next slide. Be careful, okay? Be careful. Here's the difference. I want you to, to closely look at these two circles that are on the screen. If you're looking at the two circles on the screen, they look similar, right? Here's the difference. My two equal angles both touch the circumference. In our warm-up question, one angle was at the center and the other angle was at the circumference, okay? So I want you to be careful. All right, so let's go now and let's see if we can practice this skill. So this will be, let's see, a new share. Good. So I'm going to go back to this. All right, good. All right, so let's look at A1. A1 says, find the shaded angle. Maybe let's put a spotlight on what I'm focusing on. Find the shaded angle. What's that angle? Remember I said it sort of kind of looks like a bow tie. So it's your bow tie. I call it the bow tie property. That's just me. Um, that angle is what? Very good for those of you who responded. The rest of you, let's go. Come on. Excellent. It is 18 degrees. These angles are equal. Let's look at A2. A2, what's this, what's this shaded angle? What's this shaded angle? Very good, that's 31. All right, A3 asked me to find two angles, so I'm gonna point to this one first, and I want you to tell me what that angle is. Very good, very good. That angle is 31. It can only be one value. And you got to match up your bow ties, guys. You got to match it up. 
So let me just highlight. So I say sometimes I call this the M property. Oh, that's not a really good highlight. But anyway, I'm focusing on that one there. So that means that that shade, that first shaded angle that I had the spotlight on is 31 degrees. Now let's come the other way around. What's this one? What's this one? Very good. That angle is 28. Perfect. Perfect. Good. They're asking me to find this shaded angle here. Okay. So we're going to focus on this triangle. Some persons are already answering me, getting a lot of different answers. We got to find my friend here. What's my friend there? That's my bow tie property. Your angle's in the same segment concept again. So this angle here is 42. All right. This is a triangle. So that means that I'm going to use my angles in a triangle property. I have two angles. I need to find a third one. I'm going to add 42 plus 37 will give me 79. So that means that angle must be 180 minus 79. That angle is 101. Perfect. So again, for those of you who haven't noticed it already, circle theorem sometimes uses um, they sometimes, the circle theorem question sometimes forces you to recall or apply other geometrical properties that you would have learned about angles. Angles in a triangle, angles on a straight line, angles at a point, even vertically opposite angles, because I can see that in there too, okay? So let's do another one, okay? Just like I said, so what is this shaded angle? What is that shaded angle? All right, we got an answer. I have a response from some of you. Um, okay. Remember now, we're gonna focus on the angles in a triangle. So let me highlight my triangle again. I'm going to highlight my triangle and then I'm going to, we can find um, that, that angle that shaded using the 119 degrees only. I must find another angle in my triangle. So I need to find two. And when I find two, I will find a third. Okay. So I need to find that second one. I'm just going to highlight it. I have to find my angle there and I'm going to use my angles in the same segment property. And that tells me that this angle is 32 degrees. That angle is 32 degrees. Um, so I'm going to say that that shaded angle is 180 minus 119 and 132 is I think 151, I think. Oh, I'm sorry. I have a, virus on my laptop and I just lost where I was. Uh, nope. Nope. All right. Right there. So I think this is 151. So that means that shaded angle is 29 degrees. Very good. For those of you who answered, excellent. Let's look at question two. Find the shaded angle. Find the shaded angle in question two. This time I won't give you any hints. I'm assuming and I'm hoping that most of you, when you come to math class, that you have your calculators right next to you to help you to do the calculations quicker. It's easier that way. Um, if not, um, you may not have to do it manually and it takes a little while longer. We are on B2, we are on question B2. We need to find that shaded angle. All right, so 
Looks like we need some hints. First hint would be um, if I find this angle, is that the same as finding my shaded angle? Please respond. Is that the same as finding my shaded angle? Please respond. If I find the angle that I just highlighted in yellow, is that going to be the same as finding my shaded angle? Yes, it will be. Good. Okay. We already have 76. So my thinking is, let's just use where we have a number as opposed to going to a blank triangle. All right? So we have 76. And like I said just now, we can't just use 76. We need to find a second angle in my triangle, which means that I need to find my friend here. All right? I need to find that angle there. Let me just draw it a little bit better. I have to find my friend there. Now, my friend, that's even worse. My friend there is adjacent to something. It is adjacent to something. It is adjacent. Very good, Laura. It is adjacent to 115 degrees. What angle property are we going to use? Yeah, I did say Jason. I'm sorry. Angles on a straight line. Very good to shake. Very good, Malik. So we're going to use angles on a straight line property. So that means that my red angle is, and I'm going to try to do this as best as I can. Let me don't put it there. This angle is 65. All right. I have two. Yes, very good. The red angle is 65. What is the yellow angle now? What is the yellow angle? Very good, Tere. All right, so that means that Clinton... Clinton um, and several others. I, I remember Clinton actually, he was correct. The angle is 39 degrees. That is correct. 180 minus 65 plus 76, I think is 141, I think. Let me, let me double check that before I put the wrong number up there. Yes, so that's minus 141. The angle will be 39 degrees. Very good. All right, let's move over. Let's move over. I want you to find the shaded angle. I want you to find that shaded angle. Um, I think I definitely can copy and paste this link. I think I can copy and paste this link, I think. Um. Let me see if I can do that for you. But this is a download. There's another way that I could do that. I want you to go ahead and find the shaded angle in this question, please. Do we need a hint? No, we don't need a hint. Yes, please. All right, we need a hint. Okay. Hints. Um, several ways that we can do. Let's do it this way. What is so? I'm drawing. What's that angle there? All right. So that angle there is 14. Good. When you find that angle there, I want you to find our friend here. So we're gonna, let's, let's break down this question. Angle, the angle, the red angle is 14 degrees. I know it's 14 degrees using my angles in the same segment property. So that's 14 degrees. Then I'm gonna go ahead and find all of my angles in a triangle. 
that's going to help me to find that yellow. So my yellow angle will be, and I'll write it in yellow, so you know, 180 minus 96. So that means that angle must be 84. You can't open it I'm on my computer. Okay, all right. Um, I wonder why you can't open it. Okay, give me a second, Rachel, and I'll figure out what's wrong. So this angle, the yellow angle is 84, but I'm not asked to find 84. I am asked to find the gray angle, the shaded angle. What's the property with my shaded angle? The property there is angles on a straight line. So my shaded angle is going to be 180 minus 96. Here's another thing that I'm going to put out there for you. For those persons who did angles in a triangle, that gray angle can also be, um, that, can, that, is, that is also the exterior angle of your triangle. So if you've learned this property, just to put it out there, the exterior angle of a triangle is equal to the sum, and I'm going to just put my spotlight on, it's equal to the sum of it, of the two opposite interior angles. So let's look at it. My shaded angle is 96, and that's a, an exterior angle to this triangle here. It is equal to 14 plus 82, 96. All right, so we are wrapping up. So let me go back to my PowerPoint. Let me clear my screen. Um, we learned two properties today. I want you to tell me in the chat what those two properties are. I want you to tell me in the chat what those two properties are. Um, I'm going to give you the name of the YouTube video. So I think it's maths. Let me see. I think it's math. Math. Math easy or something. Let me check. Um, while I'm doing that, I want you to tell me the two properties that you learned today. So I just want to pull up the, um, the, the name of the YouTube video. In case, just in case you can't find the link isn't working. All right, so the link of the YouTube video is Maths Made Easy. And that, that one is Circle Theorems 1. Circle Theorem Part 1. That's the name of the video. So I'm going to put it in there. Maths Made Easy, Circle Theorem Part 1. That's the name of the YouTube video. All right, so let's check my responses. We learned that angles in a semicircle, so that's the angle at the circumference in my semicircle, is equal to 90 degrees. Perfect. We also learned that angles in the same segment are equal. What must we be careful of? Tell me, what must we be careful of? That's something we need to be mindful of when we're looking at angles in the same segment. Please respond. Well, not necessarily the chord. Please respond, when we are looking at our angles that are in the same segment, what must we be, we be careful of? The angle has to, okay, very good, Ricky, I'm going to wait for the rest of them. All right, very good to Ray, very good, Aaliyah, perfect, good. Very good. Both of your angles much touch the circumference. Perfect, because sometimes you will get a bow tie that looks, you will get a, a question that looks like a bow tie that I currently have on the screen. Please tell me that you guys are seeing this. Yes, good. Sometimes we'll get a question that looks like this question here. It looks really similar to our angles in the same segment concept, but it's not. Okay, because this 45 degree angle is actually at the center. So that is the first theorem that we learned. Okay, so that's the only thing I wanted to review. Make sure that both of your angles in the same segment touch the circumference. Okay, 
So we learned three circle theorems thus far. I'm just going to recap them very, very, very quickly. The first one was the angle at the center is two times as large as the angle in the circumference. The second one was, and it's an extension of the first one, angles in a semicircle. And when you have angles in a semicircle, the angle at the circumference is a right angle. And the last one that we did today were angles in the same segment. That is it for today. I trust that you guys enjoyed and it was very informative for you. Um, see you tomorrow.